So I, I'm with you up to this point. This, this prophecy in Hosea is one of the things that after our conversation, I, I looked into a little bit more. This prophecy in Hosea, now he's talking about bringing in the Gentiles, says mm-hmm. that we'll be called the sons of God. And I told you guys last time when, when we, you know, Greg wanted us to start here. And, and although this isn't where I started, it seems perfectly suitable. So I appreciate that. And, and I wanted to prepare for this conversation, um, the initial conversation. And so I went through and I, I reread through uh, his, every verse that I could find uh, about what God says about Israel. And it's funny, I started to build a, a spreadsheet uh, about this because I want to have the data because I can't remember everything. It seems the older I get, I forget more and more. Um, and so on my spreadsheet, I had um, some of these different classes and categories of, is this natural Israel? Or is this an individual? And then I had their spiritual Israel and I had, you know, um, you know, not just corporate, but individual, but, but, but for the church. And I was looking because I, I knew that that's something that you guys are talking about. And as I was going through, I had to go back and add another category, which I wasn't anticipating, which was the sons of Israel. Uh, and this is a phrase that occurs more than 600 times in the Old Testament. Sons of Israel, sons of Israel, sons of Israel, um, sons of Abraham, sons of Israel, sons of Abraham, sons of Israel, sons of Abraham, sons of Israel. This prophecy says that they'll be called the sons of God. That's not phrasing and, and, and discussion and language that's used of Israel. This is something that's talked about the church. And I'm glad that you brought up 2 Samuel 7. The only person who was ever called, said, I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me, was given to the lineage, the very, the very chosen specific lineage of David, Solomon, and the kings. And so ultimately the, the Messiah comes and he is the true son of God. And you're right. Unlike Solomon, the father never has to discipline Christ for his sin because Christ never sinned. And he's the sinless lamb of God. And he's the firstborn among the dead, like you said, which is Israel. Uh, Israel's the firstborn. But David was also the firstborn. And so now these, these, there are these parallels and we say, well, okay, well, which one of these are we going to apply to? Well, Jesus then becomes the high priest over the household of God, which Levi and the house of Levi, they were never over the household of God. They were over the house of God, but nobody dwelt in the house. And so now we have this new order of a priest, which isn't the Israel uh, order that merges king and priest together, not the order of Aaron, but the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus is the firstborn over the household of God, that he might be the, 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 the firstborn among many brethren. And so all of a sudden, this, this language is very different. And then the symbolism of the veil being torn and, and us having access to draw near and to call God our Father. This idea of sons of God, this is so much better than what we had in Israel. And so to say that we are now in Israel, that the, the new terminology that's given um, isn't that we are in Israel, it's that we are in Christ. And this is so much more glorious. And that's what I want to preserve. And I don't think that we benefit by blurring those lines. And a prophecy like this, I think Paul is finally getting it. He was like, you know what, with all my rigor, with all my taking the law seriously and being a student of Gamaliel and on all the stuff that I was doing, I was never called a son of God. And now in Christ with Gentiles, I'm a son of God. And this hopefully is going to woo uh, to jealousy um, to, to make jealous those who are unbelieving that over time more and more um, of, of the ethnic Israel would participate in these promises and realize that the promises in Christ are even better, which of course, I think we all agree the book of Hebrews is all about. Everything's better. He, he's better than Moses. He's better than the angels. The, the new covenant's better than the old covenant. The fact that we are the temple of God, that God actually dwells in us, that we are members of God's household is so much better than simply just having the temple in our land and being able to come there three times a year, uh, and, and none of us are, have access to the Holy of Holies. Now we can boldly draw near. We can come near because we are sons. When Jesus teaches us even to pray, our Father who art in heaven, this is such a, a level of intimacy that didn't exist in Israel. And so, of course, these are continuations. Of course, these are there's, there's, there's some overlap. Um, but again, the, the parts that overlap, the parts that touch, as soon as we go a step beyond, in my opinion, we're becoming Judaizers. We're trying to then now bring in other aspects. Definitely not Judaizers. Well, we don't, we don't think we're being that. But as soon as we go a step beyond, think of if you were, if you were zealous for, for the law and all these things, people come and say, look, we believe in those signs. They're like, that's great. But look at all the stuff that, I mean, the New Testament wasn't written at that point. You got to take on circumcision. And Paul's like, no. Because you're well, not Israel, they, you don't have to go back to Israel. Well, and and that's and that's why, Joe, I, I repeatedly made um, a distinction la- uh, last episode. Uh, I said 
the church is not national Israel. The old covenant's gone. It's obsolete. Uh, yeah, we Romans, all agree on I'm it. Not Romans, but uh, Hebrews chapter 8, uh, verse 13. Thanks for watching this clip of the Exalted Christ's One Accord podcast. If you like what you've seen here, click here to watch the full episode. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any of our future content.